Dudley Robinson. Your prayer life, amen. In your praise, amen. Don't you know this place is a practice? 
practice for praising. All right. Amen. This is a place where you practice praising. Because if you praise up in here, you'll be able to praise somewhere else. Amen. You'll be able to praise God over in your house. Amen. You'll find yourself opening your mouth in your home. You'll find yourself opening your mouth even on that job. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Giving God some praise. Because you know you need that connection right then and there. Something's happening on your job that you can't, hallelujah, you don't know what to do about. And you, don't have, you can have no control over. But guess what? When you begin to praise God, when you begin to open your mouth, because see, so many people don't want to open their mouth. They want to do one of these numbers. Amen. Hallelujah. But when you open your mouth and give God praise and call on the name of Jesus, he's able, he's able to move some things. Amen. Yes. That's why you got to stay charged up. Amen. Our scripture reading is going to come from James 1. We're going to start with verse 2. And it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, Consider it an opportunity for great joy. All right. That means God knows that you can handle this thing. Amen. Amen. It says, for you know that when you, your faith is tested, your endurance has a choice, chance to grow. Amen. Amen. When your faith, thanks to God, is tested, when you're going through some things in your home, when you're going through some things on your job. Amen. If your faith is being tested. Amen. And it gives you an opportunity to grow. Why? Because you're going to stand on the faith of God. You're going to call on the name of God. You're going to give it to him. Amen. Because a lot of people don't give it to God. They give it to their friend. They call their friend. Girl, guess what happened that day? Mm. Brother, you don't know what's going on, but let me tell you something. But the time, that's the time you need to call on God. Amen. Amen. That's the time you need to tell God about it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's when your faith grows. Because when you call on the name of Jesus or you call anybody else, guess what? God hears you. Amen. And that means you trust him more than anything and anybody else. Amen. Amen. It's all right to get on the phone and talk, conversate. But come out with some encouraging words. I know God is able. Yes. I know God will do it. I know God's going to handle it. Not get on the phone, girl. Guess what they did? They think they funny. They want to act funny with me today. But guess what? I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to say this tomorrow. I'm going to act this way tomorrow. That's not your faith growing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's not, your, that's not your fruit growing. Amen. Amen. That's not your, your fruit increasing in your life. Amen. Amen. You want your fruit to increase in your life. You got to have peace with all men. Amen. You got to love regardless and have joy in the midst of all your storms. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And you find yourself disconnected to a point where you feel like you can't open your mouth. It's time to call Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. I don't even know what to say, but Jesus, I need you. Amen. We got to stay connected. We got to stay charged up. Because if we're not charged up, guess what? The enemy is trying to take us out. Yes, he is. The enemy is trying to take us out, saints of God. Yes. He's moving, hallelujah, through throughout the land. Amen? Not only in churches, all over the place. Trying to take the saints of God out. Because, you know what? He knows his time is short. Man. His time is very short, saints of God. Say it, say it. Amen. And he knows that if he can get, hallelujah, y'all, how they say it, get our goat. If he can get us all messed up in the head, if he can get us disconnected, he can bring us to a low point. Guess what? He's got us made. He got it made. Yeah. But I know in my heart, in my mind, we're going to stay charged up. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have that staying power. We're going, hallelujah, we're going to endure some things. Because guess what? Thanks to God, Jesus endured some things. Amen. He was in the land for three years, but he endured some things. Yes, he did. He put up with saints, hallelujah. He put up with them old crooked Pharisees and Sadducees. Yes. Amen. He put up with those people that said they loved God, but they loved themselves. He put up with people that didn't love God. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. For it says, so let it grow. For when your endurance grow, it's fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. All right. What he's saying? He said, if you let your endurance grow, yes. if you let your patience grow, if you let your trust grow in the Lord, 
You're not going to be like it when them things come your way. You're not going to worry about it. You're going to look at it and say light afflictions as the word of God says. Light afflictions. Light. You coming, but guess what? You're not going to win. Amen. Amen. You're not going to win. We're winners, saints. Amen. We're winners. It might look bad. Come on now. It might look like it's not going to happen. But we're winners. Amen. In Christ Jesus, we're winners. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We got to endure some things. We got to stay charged up. Because if we don't stay charged up, the enemy think he got it made. Yes, he do. We got to know who gives them us the ability to endure some hardships. Because we think sometimes that we ain't supposed to endure nothing. We ain't supposed to go through something. 2 Timothy 2 and 3. Let's go there. This is Paul talking. He says, Join me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. He said, Join me. Join me. Paul went through some suffering. All right. He went through shipwrecks. Yes. He went through beatings. Come on. Got thrown out of the city. Why? Because he stood for God. Yes, he did. And when you stand for God, don't expect everything to come to you perfectly. Everybody ain't gonna love you. Come on. Everybody ain't gonna like you. Come on, man. So we gotta suffer and endure some things. Amen. Amen. For it says, no one engaged in warfare. Saints, we'll work, we're engaged in some warfare. We're going through some way. What? Why me? Why me? Why not you? Come on. Hallelujah. No man engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. You can't be like the world. Can't do like the world. Can't talk like the world. Amen. The world has cut you out, right? Amen. The world will find a way to get you back. Amen. The world will find a way to stab you in the back. But we can't entangle ourselves. With this world and this life. Amen. Oh, amen. Thank you, Jesus. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Who enlisted you? Jesus. Who called you? Jesus. Who asked you? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Don't you know that God knows what we can bear? Amen. That's why he said, Count it all joy. Count it. When we fall into diverse temptations. Yes. Trials and stuff. Because uh -huh. he know what you can bear. He know. When it comes your way, he said, you may be able to tell the Lord, God, thank you. Because I know that you know that I can handle this. Yes. I know that I'm strong enough. Yes. Amen. Yeah. To handle this. Amen. Amen. And not only am I going to handle it, I know you're going to handle it right there with me. Come on. You're going to give me the strength and the power to handle this. Amen. Amen. To go through some suffering. To go through some hardships. To go through some pain. Go through some headaches. Amen. Amen. God, I don't need these headaches. But guess what? You can do this. Because you're going to be a testimony. You're going to be a testimony. Amen. To somebody. Somewhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sitting in the hospital. Hallelujah. Even laying in the hospital bed. Amen. Amen. You can be somewhere. You're hallelujah. It's people in prison. That's a testimony. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Gotta suffer. Sometime. First Timothy 6 and 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of the faith. He didn't tell you to lay down. He didn't tell you to give up. He didn't tell you to give in. No, no. Hallelujah. He said, fight. Fight. And he didn't say go out with your dukes. He didn't say that either. <laughs> Amen. Because people want to fight. Hey, uh, come my way. I got you. I'm going to get you. Amen. <laughs> Taking you out. Amen. He didn't say that. He said, fight the good fight of faith. That means you pray without ceasing. All right. Amen. You don't let the enemy take you down. Come on. Don't let him get in your heart. Hallelujah. You praise God through all those storms. Hallelujah. And all the rain. Knowing he's going to carry you through it. Come on. Yes, he, will. he will bring you through it, saints to God. Yes, he will. 
It said, take hold of the eternal life from which you were called when you were made your good, when you made your good confession in the presence of many witness, witnesses. Amen. Amen. Take hold. Remember, saints of God, we leave here tonight and we leave here in a minute. When you're in Christ, you're going to gain eternal life. Come on. I heard my son say this morning, we're going to be with Jesus. Uh -huh. If we fight the good fight, if we stay steadfast and not moved by the situations. Amen. Yeah. And even if you find yourself falling apart, if you get back up. Amen. 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 Shake yourself. Shake Put your hands in God's hand. Mm -hmm. Say, God, I know you can see me through. I know you will see me through. Amen. 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 Hey, if I fall in short, forgive me, God. You know me. You know my struggles. Help me in my struggles so I can do better and be better. Amen. But I'm going to fight this thing. I'm not going to let it take me out. Amen. Amen. How many times we young girls and got out there fighting? Remember those girls we fight? Uh -huh. They be beating them up, but they don't let them take them down, do they? <laughs> India. Amen. <laughs> they might get a big lip, guess what? But they're going to keep on fighting until they get, get your big lip. Amen. 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 That's right. <laughs> Nobody. No. That's not going to happen. Amen. Young people don't give up. And I know when we were young, we didn't give up either. All right. We didn't let nobody beat us up. I heard my husband say, his daddy said, if you come home, you better not come home if, if Larry fighting by, out there fighting. Amen. You better have some knots too. Amen. Amen. You better have some knots too. Amen. Amen. You don't let the devil take you down. Amen. Amen. Don't let him pull you down in the place where he is. All right. Amen. Because if he can pull you down with a place where he is, you going where he going. All right. Amen. All right. Know that you are much more powerful than the devil. Amen. God's word is much more powerful than the devil. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The word of God says in Galatians 6 and 9. Open the door, John. It's Matthew. It says, let us not become weary in doing good. You know, sometimes as a people, we get tired of doing what's right. Uh -huh. Saints get tired of doing what's right. Y'all looking at me funny. Yeah. I'm tired of doing what's right. Everybody else is doing wrong. I'm tired of uh, kneeling. I'm tired of bowing my head. I'm tired. I'm tired of people messing over me, mistreating me. Yeah, we say that. But the Bible says, let us not be weary in doing good. Hallelujah. For it says, at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. We're going to reap things. And God's going to let the people that did us wrong see that we are going to reap. He's going to let them see it. When you humble yourself, amen, before God, hallelujah, God, he will exalt you in due time, amen. When you humble yourself, when you're, hallelujah, the devil, the enemy, your enemy does what he does to you, amen. God is the one that's going to exalt you. You're going to reap the harvest. The enemy is going to see you being blessed, amen. A lot of times we think, oh my gosh. I'm so embarrassed. Oh my gosh. Hallelujah. Look what he said to me or she said to me. Don't worry about it. When God said, hold your peace, hold your peace. Amen. And stand back. Amen. Stand back. And look like, oh man, you just don't know, baby. You don't know what's about to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't know. You ain't trying to talk nothing bad about them or put them down. But you don't, you don't, you don't know what you just did. You just get, you get ready to get me blessed. Because I'm humbling myself. All right. I'm allowing God to deal with this. Amen. The Bible says vengeance is mine. I'm going to repay him. Yeah. Amen. That means we ain't supposed to go out there and do evil for evil. Amen. He said, I'm going to repay them. So you get to look at those people and say, girl, you just don't know what you did. Yeah. You just got me blessed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I just earned something from God that the hallelujah that I asked for for some years. It might be some years last, oh, yesterday, oh, last week. Because I'm going to trust him in this thing. All right. Oh, 
I'm not going to let you take me to a place of defeat. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's what the enemy tries to do. He's trying to take us to a place of defeat, saints. Yes. Yes, sir. I'm reminded of Joseph. Remember, anybody know remember Joseph? Remember how Joseph was put in jail? First, he was kidnapped by his brothers. Come on. And they throwed him in the pit. Yes, they did. They wanted to kill him. His other brother said, no, don't do it. So he sold him into slavery. Yes, they did. Mm. Sometimes the enemy thinks he got you all bound up. Amen. All messed up. I mean, hallelujah. Feel like you wanna, you've been thrown away. Amen. But guess what? God got a plan. Yes, he do. He always has a plan. Amen. Always. Hallelujah. Sometimes we, we didn't know that, did we? No. At times we didn't know that. When we first came into Christ, we had to learn that God always has a plan for everything that's going on. Because yes. the word says, for all things work together for, for, good. for good. For good. Always for good sakes of those who love God. Amen. And are called according to His purpose. We've been called. Amen. We've been called for a purpose. Remind yourself every time things begin to happen, we've been called. Joseph got thrown in the jail. And while he was there, let's go to Genesis 40. Let me read it. Yes, it was. Genesis 40, verse 14. While he was there, things began to happen. Come on. And one thing I liked about Joseph, Joseph didn't give up on God. In the midst of prison, God put him in charge. Mm -hmm. In the midst of prison, God, hallelujah, allowed him to be most, more likely free over everybody that surrounded him. He was blessed even in prison. Even in your suffering, you're blessed. Yeah. Even when you're going through, you're blessed. Seems like all hope is gone, but you're blessed. 14 says, but when all goes well with you, and he was talking to the butler who had a dream, and he had a dream that, let me, I can't read, I didn't read that part, but he had a dream, and Joseph told him, says, all is going to go well with you. Come on. Yeah. And the banker, he was, he was told him that his head was going to be cut off. Hey Amen. Amen. Pay attention to me, y'all. Don't pay attention to the kids, because they'll make a noise. <laughs> So the baby, his head was going to be cut off. But he told the butler that everything was going to go well for you. And when he told him that everything was going to go well, he also told him in 14, but when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness and mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. He did a good thing. He helped this man out. But guess what? The butler forgot about it. Uh -huh. Saints of God, that lets me know you can't depend on man. Come on, now. Come on. Come on. If you want a blessing, you better depend on God. Amen. Amen. You can pray for that man to remember what he's supposed to remember. Because <laughs> you're praying to God still. Amen. But you better not depend on man because if you want to be blessed, if you want to be lifted up, if you want things to happen for you in your life, you better pray to God. Yes, sir. And that's what Joseph did. All this time, he had to depend on God to watch over him, and he did. And he didn't give up on God. He continued to do the work for the Lord while he was there. Amen. That butler forgot him for two years. Come on, come on. He was in that prison after he had helped this man. Come two on. years. Come on. And he could have said, man, Lord, what's going on? I'm doing good. I pay my tithes. That's probably what everybody's saying here. I come to church every Sunday. I'm making Bible study. I'm trying to do that my best. So why things are not coming the way I, I, it should come for me? Why? Why? God has his timing. Amen. It's a trying of your faith. Yes, yes it is. 
God sees where your faith is and you want to see further how far you're going to go. And how much you're going to stand and stand for him. And Joseph stood for him. Amen. Yeah. And he began to tell this man, he says in 15, I was forcefully carried off from the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. He mumbled in the plane. He told him, man, I don't even belong here. Sometimes in our hearts and minds, I don't even belong. I, I should be going through this. Amen. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yes. But God had a plan. Amen. There's a purpose for us to be wherever we are Amen. or whatever we're doing. There's a purpose. Yes, Amen. Amen. So in 23, the chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. For those two years, he was there. Yes, he were. Until one day, one day, two years later, come on. Pharaoh had a dream, mm -hmm. and he needed somebody to interpret it. Yes. And that's when the cup holder, bearer, the butler, came to his senses. He said, "Wait a minute, I know somebody that can interpret your dream." And guess what? They pulled him out, cleaned him up, and pulled him out, and he told Pharaoh his dream. Now, you can imagine, had he been out before that, he wouldn't been, would not have been in the place where he should have been. Sure, sure. Sure. Because after he blessed Pharaoh, God, God blessed him. Pharaoh blessed him. He became ambassador over everything. Come on, come on. God opened some doors. That no man could close. Amen. People look at people today and say, You've been in prison, man, you don't get no good job. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. That's the first thing they say. Man, you did this, so you ain't gonna get no good job. Come on now. But God has the final say. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on, come on, say it. When you live for God, come on. He has the final say. No man can stop what God has for you. Amen. No man. No man. Glory to God. Amen. I had a sister and brother sitting here. Their credit score was terrible. And they told them they would never get a house. Mm. Mm. God blessed them. Amen. They got a house. Yeah. Amen. When people tell you what you can't have. Yeah, say it, say it. What you can't do. Say it, Pastor. Tell them God has the final say. Amen. Amen. I trust him. Mm -hmm. He opened doors that no man can close. Amen. And when God gave it to you, can't nobody take it away from you. Amen. Only you, you. can stop it. Yes. Amen. Don't make them payments you're going to be getting out. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but truly, only you. When God put it in place, when he set it up, can't no man stop it. Amen. No man. Because he has the final say. He said, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. You just got to do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 31. Let's go there. All right. Josh was all over my stuff today. <laughs> Isaiah 40 and 31 says, But those who trust the Lord will find new strength. New strength. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Not strength in yourself. Not strength in people. But in God. You'll find some new strength. He said they will be like strong eagles. Soaring upward on wings. Don't you know eagle is a big strong and powerful bird. Mm -hmm. A big giant bird. But even the eagle don't trust in his own strength. He, he calls the, the winds, when the winds begin to blow high, that's when he go out and he begin to soar. You know why? Because he knows that he needs help. All right. He knows that if he, if he go out there and try to do things in his own strength, it would cause him to be defeated. I was reading it says that he could literally have a heart attack because he was trying to do something on his own. See it, see it. So he waits till the winds are high. To the currents get way up. Uh -huh. And he goes out and he begins to source. 
He don't flap his wings. He soars. Saints, we're eagles. All right. And when those hardship gone go begin to happen, uh -huh. when those problems and situations, we need to soar. You know why? Because Jesus got us in his hands like, so that we can fly like the eagle. Come on, come on. Yeah. We can endure like the eagle. The eagle. We're going to make it through like the eagle. the eagle. And see, the eagle got sharp eyes. He see when the enemy comes to attack. And when he see when the enemy comes to attack, he can be ready. Hallelujah. To go down and destroy. Yeah. Amen. We got eyes just like the eagle. Amen. And when we see the enemy comes, hallelujah, we begin to pray. We begin to fast. We get in the word. We get to speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Against that thing, that situation. Hallelujah. Because we got a sharp eye for what he's about to do. Glory to God. Let him come out of where sakes of God. Yeah. We're gonna be alert. Yes. We're gonna be ready. Because you know what? The enemy might not see what's going on, but the saints of God knows what's going on. Amen. Because you're connected. You're charged up with Christ. Mm -hmm. You're connected. You stay fueled up. You don't allow yourself to get so low that the enemy come and a pounce upon you. Amen. You're not gonna let that happen. You're gonna stay. Hallelujah. Fully invested in him. Amen. 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 Invested in him. Glory to God. What is that? Invested. Fully connected in Christ. Yes. You got that word on the inside. So when the enemy comes to attack, you come against him with the word. You got praise going on. When you can't open your mouth and say nothing else, all you can do is worship and praise God. Yes. Tell, call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, now I'll see God all say. Thank you, God. He said, give him thanks through those trials. Yes, yes. Lord. Give him some thanks through tribulation. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, because he's got your back, saints. He's gonna take you through it. He's gonna bring you through it. Amen. Thank you, God. The word says, they will walk and not grow weary. He's talking about us. We'll walk, but we're not going to get weary. He said we'll run and not faint. We'll never get tired. Hallelujah. Because God's got our back. He's right there for us. He's right there with us, taking us through, delivering us, setting us free from the hands of the enemy. Glory to God. We got purpose, saints. We got purpose. We got purpose. Amen. Amen. God said we need a charge. We need a charge. We need a charge. Charge me, Lord. We don't need a pill. Come on, somebody. We don't need a drink. Uh-uh. Come on now. We don't need a support group. There's nothing wrong with it, but you don't need a support group. <laughs> Amen. All you need is Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I don't like people go to counseling. Amen. Go. Yes. But while you're there, you call on Jesus. Yes. To give them some wisdom and knowledge. To tell you the right thing. Amen. Amen. But don't let them be your total help. You know where your help. The song says, all of my help come from the Lord. Oh, man. Oh. It says, oh. I look to the hills which, from which cometh my help. My help comes from God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Who's made heavens and earth. If he can make heaven and earth, don't you think he can't make things for us or do things for us? Yes, he can. That's where God is. Yes. I need to turn that heat on. We got a divine connection. And if you don't have a divine connection, or if you don't know God, it's time to get to know him. Amen. It's time to get to know him. Yes, it is. It ain't time to just be a, a pew warmer. Right. As bitch, my son said that this morning. You can be a pew warmer. Somebody to come and sit in the pews every Sunday. Amen. Instead of being a pew warmer, be a prayer warrior. Come on, Amen. come on. That's it. 
instead of being a pure warmer, a pure warmer, how about being a teacher of the word? A person that knows the word, that trusts the word. Be an encourager. Be somebody that encourages somebody. Be an exalter. Tell somebody they can make it. Stop yeah. Don't always look out for yourself. Look out for somebody else. Amen. You can make it. You can do this. Yes. God said you can do it. This is what the word says. So stop, stop depending on everything but God. Because God is a helper. He's our strong tower. He's our deliverer. He's our way maker. He's all that and more. Amen. 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 Don't you love the Lord? Yeah. Give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs>